Happy Friday and welcome to my new series, Attacker. So without further ado, let's get started. Next move, White decided to invade at R14, uh, which is a slightly inaccurate move. Um, so the correct move usually is for us to um, play the O17 approach uh, because we are freer. Uh, when we invade at R14, there's already a pincering stone. So we are kind of ambushed uh, in some sort of way. So um, this is an inaccurate move. Obviously, in today's uh, understanding, uh, playing the 3-3 three, three Joseki is perfectly fine as well. But what if your opponent actually just invades here, right? And then how can we uh, deal with this? The first move is for black to kick white. Obviously, we'll want to get rid of the roots of our opponent. And then white extends out, and then black jumps at 016. I feel like this is some sort of textbook stuff that pretty much all of my viewers already know about, right? Even my viewers who are currently uh, in the double digit queue, uh, t or I would say temporarily in the double digit queue uh, level, uh, you will very quickly uh, become single digit queue after this series, no worries. Uh, but I'm pretty sure you guys have seen that as well. This is a very standard textbook way of defending. And obviously, uh, my first video on attacker won't stop here. Uh, Today's topic is about illustrating you the most important principle, which is our principle one of the attacker, that is to attack to generate profits. So what do I mean by attack to generate profits? So let's look at the follow-ups. The first possibility is for White to make a one space extension, trying to get himself some roots and safety. So now we need to follow up with our principle one. That is to block white here and then jump over here. By exchanging these moves, black is able to gain tremendous influence towards the bottom side. And also with this kick over here, black is able to have a lot of potential in the upper corner. By attacking our opponent, Black is able to generate profits on both sides, and therefore he is leading in the game. If white follows up with a big knight to get himself out, black is able to generate even more profits uh, with slightly more passive O3, uh, but obviously black can also think about playing a, another move to even enlarge his corner, right? to even make more expansion. Uh, this is a very comfortable game for black moving on because white is all squeezed in this narrow valley uh, and then black white's uh, white has pretty much no points and these stones are very very inefficient comparing to black stones as we can tell by tightly following our principle one uh, that is to attack to generate profits black has a very very easy game and very very a nice leading game moving on. Okay, so that's not the end of the story. Uh, White is not happy. White thinks, you know what? I have other refutations. I have other moves to play. Why do I have to play R12? What about if I play a Q12? What if, you know, I play a higher space, one space extension? Have you seen this before? Do you know how to deal with it? So let me first be clear. So in the attacker, um, first I would like to introduce the concepts, the ideas, because they are the most important. If you know the idea, you know the direction of play, uh, you will your your rank is gonna skyrocket. A lot of game of your games, you would actually win uh, in the early game uh, without even going to any sort of close body combat, uh, and this is very very important. Uh, that I introduce these ideas to you uh, so you can uh, you can play proper uh, and you can attack properly and then have a very easy leading game. So I want you to pause the video and think about uh, what black needs to play next, obviously uh, having our principle one in mind. 
how can we generate profits when we attack White's group? All right, welcome back. So this is obviously an open question. So I have a few suggestions for you guys. Uh, so if you told me, hey, uh, listen, I want to play this one because I want to get rid of White's roots and I want to uh, generate more influence towards the bottom side, I would absolutely give you 100% on this question uh, because you have mastered the correct idea. We attack to generate profits. Some other players are saying, hey, you know what? I don't like shape the shape of this Kosumi because I feel like white's going to attach me on top at some point. That could be annoying, which is why I'm going to play R10 in this case. Once again, I will give you 100% because you have the right idea. We're squeezing white inside this narrow valley and we generate profits on both sides from this attack. We're tightly following our principle one. So the moves you play here, they're all very, very good because they follow the principles. You say, hey, you know what? I feel like this bamboo shape is not very efficient. What about if I retreat here at R9? I will give you 100%. You know why? Because you are following the correct principles. You are squeezing white inside this valley. You're generating profits on both sides. And sometimes, guys, go is as easy as that, right? Uh, as long, you know, as long as you follow the correct direction, you follow the correct idea. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe the win rates vary slightly between these moves, but the overall flow is on. It's in your control, right? Uh, if you tell me, hey, you know what? I want to just like play this one because I feel like there's nothing I can do, so I'm gonna grab more profits. Guess what? 100%. Why? Because you understand the principle one. We are grabbing profits. This is a game of points. So our attack can pause at any time for the sake of profits. Once again, excellent job if you tell me you just want to play R6. And finally, if you tell me, hey, I'm a more of a Moyo player, I want to jump out and then expand my influence once again. Yeah, as I said many, many times, you'll get 100% from me, right? I'm a very, very generous person. You know why? There's a solid reason. You are understanding the principle. So let's take any of these moves, for example. Let's just play this bamboo shape. Then white is, is going to jump out because he needs more moves to uh, secure his, his group. If he doesn't do that, black is able to um, play this one. And all of a sudden... White is under more fierce attack. So if white hops out, um, so now once again, I give you this as an exercise. Uh, it's a very, very open question. Uh, what would you play next, right? So go ahead and think about it. And when you come back, we'll talk about some of the possible answers, right? If you tell me, hey, um, you know what? I wanna play L16 because I want to follow my principle one, generate more profits, 100%. 100% agree with you, right? Uh, you generate more profits, and then you understand that your attack is to generate profits. If you tell me, hey, uh, you know what? I wanna play this one. Once again, the correct answer, right? Flawless answer. There's, n there's This is just a great move. Um, it follows our principle, follow the correct direction. This is as simple as attack can, as, as thing can be. There's so many good moves as long as you understand, understand the principle. And trust me, uh, you know, when you play this game, a lot of times uh, it's about these ideas that get you really ahead. Uh, especially uh, if you're, you know, you, you are marching into the down level, I would say, or, or you're in a di single digit Q level. All right. To give you guys a little bit more exercises, right? What about white plays this one, right? This is more an exercise for double digit Q players. Uh, what about, you know, some moves like this, right? Go ahead and think about it and welcome back. If you think the answer is gonna be blocking here, following our principle, you're hundred percent right. Why pushes out? You don't like complication, extend up. You're following the principles. 
Look at white. Inefficient stones. Inefficient stones. And all of our stones are following principles. We're getting the profits and we're leading in the game. As simple as that sometimes. And finally, what about a more tricky move, right? Like more of a, a tougher to deal with move, right? So a lot of times you would see this move, uh, especially when you play against an opponent who is slightly better than you or uh, who thinks, you know, there's no punish for this kind of moves. What can we do about this S10 move? So feel free to pause, think about it. And when we come back, so first of all, if we want to get to tac uh, get tactical, uh, we can play this one. Uh, when white retrieves, uh, we can block here. The cut does not work because the ladder is working for black. And uh, there's obviously some weaknesses over here. So white needs to fix. Uh, and then black plays a tiger's mouse. Uh, that's 100% correct. Uh, once again, profits on the bottom, profits on the top. White's all squeeze over here. Uh, beautiful answer. What if white does not allow you to build stuff over here, right? This gets slightly complicated. Uh, the accurate move is for you to jump uh, at R12. Obviously, this could be a little bit a little bit beyond the scope of this lesson. So, but today I want to, you know, I illustrate you some of the more fierce way for black to punish white, uh, but a great way to punish white uh, is to follow our principles. And then I want to really illustrate you the power of ideas. The, pow the idea can make you, you know, level up your rank by at least two, all of a sudden, if you understand what you're doing. What about we just play this one? You know, it looks like it looks like wow, you're just letting white bullying you by, you know, crawling into your territory. But then if you think about it again, attack, isn't that attack is all about generating profits? You know, I see this this guy on YouTube, he said that. This is our principle one. And what it, what if I follow it? Well, congratulations. If you follow my principles, you are definitely leading in the game. Uh, your corner is solidified, your upper corner is untouched, and look at white. This formation is still problematic. White needs to go back and fix. A whiter he fix here. Whoops. Oh my god. Sorry about that. So once again, uh, whether he fix here or he fix here, uh, the move doesn't even matter because you know what? We understand what we are doing. We are attacking and we are generating profits. Once we generate enough profits, we can go ahead and play somewhere else. It's all about profits. Uh, and that's just the game of Go. It's a game of points because at the end of the game, you have to count how many points you have and you have to compare that to your opponent. Uh, so why not just grab as much cash as you can right, while you attack? So I think I have repeated a lot of things. But I think it's worth it because this is really the idea number one that you have to always keep in mind that will repeatedly happen uh, in the future videos of my attacker series. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first video. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos when they come out. And thank you very much for tuning in. Have a nice weekend and we'll see you in the next video.